What if your slap could kill a man? Today we're going to be covering an independent book called God Slap. This story was created by Moist Critical of many, many things fame, but many of you are going to know him from his YouTube channel, Penguin Zero. He has quite a large team behind the book, and honestly, it's a lot of fun. Art's great, and the story just slaps. If you're wondering where you are, this is Comic Story, and we take comic books, create audio dramas out of them, because I just have fun narrating things. We typically cover DC and Marvel comic books, and today we're covering this independent book for you. If you enjoy it, make sure you click the link down below, as issue 3 will be dropping very soon. The rain fell hard on the slums of Montplier, as Darius Braun made his way into the Elder Swan. The Elder Swan was a local bar where businessmen and everyday workers could get a drink and unwind after a hard day's work. But sometimes they could unwind a little too much. One businessman, after waiting over an hour for a drink, made his displeasure known with the waitress, and he suddenly feels something. Before he can realize it, he's already dead from a gunshot wound to the forehead. The other patrons of the bar begin to scream, and Darius begins to walk through the crowds until he reaches the dead man, kicking him in the stomach. Within seconds, the guards all begin to swarm around Darius, telling him to put his hands in the air. He grins. He spins around, throwing his jacket at the men. The guards, they open fire. The shooting stops, and the bullet-riddled jacket falls to the ground. Darius is nowhere to be seen. One of the guards looks at the smoking jacket, stating that there is no way that he survived that right? He couldn't have just disappeared. At that moment, an open palm comes through, smacking the guard in the face with enough force to obliterate his upper half. The guards see Darius standing there asking, how? They point their guns, firing once more, and with another powerful swing of his arm, Darius spins the bullets and they all go back, pelting each of the guards. With no guards to stop him, Darius looks up at the security camera and he points at it, telling Sal that it's been too long. Back in the security room, Sal looks at the monitor, asking, What the hell is he doing here? Lock down the Elder Swan and call! But before he could finish what he's saying, Darius flicks his finger at the camera, causing the monitor to explode, blowing the head off of the operator. Sal looks at the man. He still got it. And then suddenly the remaining guards' heads all begin to pop. Sal tries to secure his room, but Darius walks in and leans on the door asking for a cigarette. You know, for old time's sake. Sal nervously reaches into his jacket, pulling one out. I could have had you killed. They wanted you dead. But I let you walk away. You gotta know. If you kill me now, they'll know. And you'll never be safe again. You are the boy. Your blood is tainted. Darius exhales, creating a giant hand. As Sal sees this, he stumbles back, telling him to think about what he's doing. You'll die for this! Is that boy worth your life? Darius raises his hand. Yes. And he swings his arm, turning Sal into a bloody red mist. Later, Darius returns home to the farm. And he thinks to himself that it doesn't matter whose life it is. It doesn't matter how many have to die. As long as his brother, Aeus, lives. A.S. wipes the sweat from his brow as Darius pulls up asking, How was Multiplier? Get the supplies that we needed. He hops off his bike telling him no. Spike's shop was boarded up. A.S. then offers to go in his place and scrounge for parts, but Darius continues on and tells him, No, stay away from Multiplier. Just finish up with the fence and put the Lancer in the barn. A.S. pauses looking back at the bike for a moment. He throws on his jacket, jumping up, speeding towards the city. As Aeus races to Montiplier, just outside of the city, Dr. Cyril Renault finishes tending to a patient when suddenly an alarm goes off in his lab. Cyril hurries to the lab, stating that for the love of the seventh palm, disable the alarm! Pex now! The automated robot tells him right away and turns it off. Cyril asks what happened. Pex taps away at the computer, stating that it would appear that an anomaly was detected. Serial then looks over at the readout, telling them that it was impossible. Their theory, everything that they worked for after all of this. He turns back to the robot. You know what this means. Of course, it shall be done. I will find him. As he finishes, Pex begins to transform himself down into a small ball. Thank you, old friend. 
This will change the world forever, for better or for worse. Meanwhile, in Monteplier, Aeus arrives in the town when he's spotted by a gang of scrappers. As he realizes this, a scrapper leaps off the building and attacks, telling him that they only want the bike. Give up now and you won't be hurt! Of course, Aeus fights back by headbutting the scrapper, and while trying to shake him off, the scrapper slams his knife into the controls, sending Aeus crashing into the building. Soon, the other scrappers begin to surround the wreckage. These pots, they could be worth a small fortune! Aeus tries to tell them to get back, but the scrapper asks why should they? Besides, it's no use to a corpse! At that moment, an enhanced scrapper jumps out from the group, swinging his massive fist that Aeus easily dodges. Next, the scrapper takes his turn, swinging his knife, telling Aeus to stop moving. He stops smiling. You asked for it. He stands still for a moment, holding up his hand, and in a flash, the scrapper's body is ripped to shreds as the others begin to wonder what did he even do. The same thing I'm about to do to you! With another swing of his arm, the behemoth scrapper explodes with a thundering boom! Red chunks of flesh and innards go flying. As Aeus comes to, his eyes open, and he sees an arm, his arm, on the ground. And he says that Darius is going to kill him. He picks up his arm and begins to walk out of the alleyway when a woman comes up to him on her bike. He nearly passes out in front of her, so she stops taking off her helmet, asking if he can hear her. Just try to focus on my voice. Listen to what I'm saying. I'll get you some help. Unbeknownst to Aeus, the woman helping him is the daughter of Cyril Renault, Cyan. But unbeknownst to Cyan, there is someone else watching them. As Cyan gets Aeus set up on her bike, the man on the rooftops stops. Interesting. DeFister's not going to like this. The man quickly runs along the rooftops and back to his aircraft, hurrying back to the giant building in the sky known as the Bicep. A voice calls over the radio, stating that DeFister isn't expecting you, Old Factor. Old Factor tells the operator that DeFister's going to want to hear this. There's been an update regarding the doctor situation. Inside the Bicep, a large man walks into a room full of men chained and hanging from the ceiling. The daughters met an interesting man. The large man then punches one, sending the head of one of the chained men flying across the room, splattering against the window. As the giant muscular DeFister walks into the light, he smiles with his large handlebar mustache, wiping his hand clean. Send the men and extend the diving board. Back down outside of Monteplier, Cyan rushes into her father's clinic calling for help. And Cyril steps out asking what is going on. Cyan stumbles in with Aya stating that she just found him like this and he needs their help. Cyril looks over at Aeus, stating that he has lost a lot of blood, but they'll do what they can for him. Later, Cyril looks over at the monitor, stating that this can't be true, and Pex says that the boy's survival is looking. Cyril agrees, telling him that he knows. The way the arm is just reattaching itself, it's... But before he could finish his statement, Aeus wakes up and Cyril tells him to relax. He's been through a lot, but can he remember what happened out there? Aeus tries to think, stating that he was on his Lancer, and a fight, then there was a girl. Cyan walks in, telling him that that would be her, the woman who found him, and his arm. This man is her dad, the hero who saved him. Aeus looks at his bandaged arm, stating that he doesn't know how to thank them, but he can't stay here. He needs to go back out, and... Cyril states that he isn't ready to discharge him yet. What's your name? Aeus tells him. Well, it's nice to meet you, but we're going to run a few more tests on you to make sure that there isn't any kind of infection or abnormalities. You're going to feel a pinch. I'm going to take a guess and say that you've been through much worse. After drawing some of his blood, Cyril tells him that it's excellent. We'll be back shortly. And Cyan, make sure that he gets some rest. A bit later, after running up and down the hallways with Aeus in his wheelchair, Aeus asks if this counts as rest. Cyan says that he's sitting, isn't he? Besides, there's something that she wanted to show him. And if she does, he has to promise that he won't tell her father. She opens a door and the lights begin to reveal a large machine. She tells him that it's mostly storage, old medical files, x-rays, and body imaging. Some date back almost a hundred years. Some left over from when her dad set up his clinic. Often she'd spend hours here pretending to do medical research just like her dad. Until she actually became her father's assistant. This whole place kind of just became her life. She then flips a switch and suddenly a projection of a person appears and says that there she is, much better than an imaginary friend. 
Aeus looks at the projection, stating that she really is lucky to share so much with her father. She laughs. I guess. But what's with your parents? He sighs, telling her that her guess is as good as any. He's never met them. She puts her hand on his shoulder, telling him that she's sorry. And Aeus tells her that it's okay. It's hard to miss what you've never had. Though it's hard to not wonder. Just then, there's an explosion that shakes the entire building. Back in the lab, a group of mercenaries storm the lab, and the leader tells Cyril that he's sorry. They don't have an appointment. He begins to get back to his feet. What do you want? Who are you? The leader walks over to the large testing tube, and Cyril immediately tells him to get away from it. But as he gets closer, another mercenary cracks him across the face. Cyan and Aeus come running over asking what's going on. However, before she could get an answer, Cyan is grabbed and Aeus goes on the defensive shouting to let her go. As the other mercenaries draw their guns and look at Aeus, the leader laughs. Is he playing her? Wonderful. He turns back to the test tube, activating it, and then radios in his findings. Defister tells him, superb. Now hold your position, it's time to dive. As the call ends, a platform begins to extend before Defister as he begins to count down from five. He leaves on the board, flinging himself upwards, and then he aims himself downward with both fists out. Three, two, one. As soon as he finishes his countdown, Defister crashes through the clinic, landing directly onto the mercenary leader, splattering the room in a red haze. Defister then gets back up, brushing off the entrails. I'm sorry for just dropping in like this. I know how distasteful it can be. But once I learned what you had, I couldn't resist. Serial gets up shouting, There is no way that I'm going to allow you to touch my work. What makes you think you had a choice? I'd rather die than let you have it. As you wish. And he smacks him across the room. Cyan rushes over to her father, telling him to wake up. But DeFister tells her to mourn quietly. He wishes to savor the moment. As Aeus watches this unfold, he can feel his body tense up as he runs over, calling DeFister a monster. And he raises his hand. Just then, there's another explosion as Aeus slaps down, and he asks, who is next? As the smoke clears, DeFister is still standing there, now with a cut across his cheek. DeFister takes his fingers, brushing them across the wound, licking the blood. Interesting. Very interesting. DeFister reaches out with his massive hands, grabbing Aeus by the neck, and as he lifts him up, everything begins to change. Instead of holding Aeus up by the throat, he's holding up a newborn baby. He lets go of Aeus, telling him to state his name, and Aeus says, How about I give you some advice instead? Walk away. Now, while you still can. Aeus then leaps up, delivering another ear-splitting slap, followed by another and several more. After the first one, DeFister easily dodges, leaning from side to side to avoid getting hit. Suddenly, his arms stop, and Cyan calls out to Aeus. DeFister continues to hold his arms in place. What is your name? A strong name for such a strong young man. Breaking you will be a delight. DeFister then leans back, hunching forward, delivering a thundering crack of a headbutt as he lets Aeus go. Before Aeus could even fall to the ground, DeFister continues with a brutal punch to the stomach, finishing by slamming him down with both hands clenched together. Aeus lays motionless on the ground. DeFister scoffs, picking him back up. What a disappointment to have such power without the slightest idea of how you harnessed it. I almost pity you. But there's no point in shedding tears over wasted potential. The only thing that matters is execution. He pulls back his fist one more time, and he punches Aeus in the gut so hard that he launches him across the lab, crashing into the wall. The fister begins to dust himself off. One of the mercenaries calls out to him, and he turns back to see what is happening. He sees Cyril attempting to destroy his work, and he tells him, Don't be foolish. It's finished. Don't throw your life away. Cyril looks back to Cyan, telling her she has to get Aeus out of here. Cyan begs him not to do it, but Cyril tells her that he loves her, and he reaches into the test tube. At that moment, there's a giant explosion that rips apart everything and everyone in the immediate vicinity. The shock wave of the explosion causes parts of the lab to collapse upon itself, sending chunks of debris on top of Cyan. As the light begins to fade, she remembers a time with her father long ago. Her father told her that he knows what happened to her mother and that she must hate him for spending so much time with his research, but she has to understand that he must keep going. She tells him that she doesn't hate him, but he tends to see his patience more than he does her. Cyril says that it's hard to explain, but ever since he, they, lost her, he has to find out why, find out how it happened. 
She begins to cry, asking why does it even matter? Her mother's gone forever. And he wipes away the tears, telling her that she never left them. He can see her now in her face. She reminds him of her each and every day. And he's incredibly proud of her. No matter what happens, just know that you have a mother and a father who love you so much. As the image of her father fades, Cyan begs him not to go and reaches out. And then she finds herself back in the destroyed clinic. She pulls herself out of the rubble, asking if anyone's there, and she hears Aeus under a few boulders alive. She begins to throw the rocks off, telling him that she's got him now. Everything's going to be okay. So another independent book, but this one's actually been created by Moist Critical, a huge YouTuber here on the YouTube platform. He also goes by Penguin Zero if you're looking for his channel, and I don't know what his Twitch channel is, I just watch his re-uploads over here. As you know, I don't typically touch the independent realm because sometimes they don't want me to, but I was actually requested to do this series by their company, and the company's run by a few friends of mine in the comic book industry that I didn't realize had moved over there. Anyway, if you enjoyed this, because I definitely did, but I also love anything really over the top like this, as you can tell by the way I was narrating it, if you enjoyed this, Issue 3 is dropping very soon. I'm going to give you the link to their store down below. Check it out. Grab yourself Issue 1 and 2 for your collection. Grab yourself Issue 3. It is a really fun and awesome book. I'm really enjoying it. Also, if I mispronounced any of those names, I do apologize. I don't know where they've been pronounced ever, so I kind of went with what I thought they were. Either way, I hope you guys enjoyed. If this is your first time watching a comic story and video, we do things like cover Batman, we cover Spider-Man, we cover all your favorite comic books over here, and we do them in large chunks, giving you audio dramas of all of them. So make sure you subscribe, hit that notification bell, and like this video if you did enjoy this. Really do appreciate it. We've been around for a while, and we hope you'll be joining the Comic Story and family. See you next time.